the choices that you make today will not only impact your life today, but they will impact your life for decades. Welcome to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, dedicated to you and your loved ones living at 100% for 100 years and beyond. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Plaster. Welcome, everybody, to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, where we are transforming health and longevity consciousness worldwide so you and your loved ones can live at 100% for 100 years and beyond. Today, we're going to talk about the 100 Year Lifestyle way. And people ask me all the time, you know, what's different about the 100 Year Lifestyle? What's unique? Well, we're going to define it for you today very clearly with what it is and what it isn't. And it's important because, as you know, there is a longevity crisis in the making. 100-year-old people, we've talked about it before, are the world's fastest-growing group percentage-wise. But many of them did not get there with health and vitality. Too many are rotting away, sadly, deteriorating in nursing homes and assisted living centers. In the United States, it's different than many other countries where they're active and healthy. And we are starting to see a movement and a shift in this consciousness and how people are living as we also see now people at 100 years old that are running and engaging in birthday parties and celebrations and visiting with their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And the reality of it is that if you're listening right now, that the choices that you make today will not only impact your life today, but they will impact your life for decades and decades and decades into the future. So we want you to think differently. These principles that we're going over, I love the book Principles by Ray Dalio. Uh, It was amazing about how he laid out principles for living. And so much of what we're talking about here are principles for living that are different than the norm. Why are they different than the norm? Because the norm has created a longevity crisis. It's created a neurological crisis in children where we have more autistic kids, more neurologically damaged kids than ever that are going to be stuck on that track. Certainly, they all have a potential. We believe in their potential through the care that many of our affiliates provide around the country. They're getting better and functioning at much higher levels because they're taking care of their nervous systems differently. But why start out that way? And along the way, why would you want to put yourself in a position where you are behind the eight ball, so to speak, where you have to catch up and you have to reinvent yourself. And if you are in that place where you're reinventing yourself to live your best life every day, 100% for 100 years, and you're 30, 40, 50, 60, or however old that you are, that you could do it with a vision in mind and you have clarity about what that vision is. And so let's talk about, let's define it, um, what it is. The first point is that it is living a healthy, passionate, prosperous life every day of your life for 100 years and beyond. Well, listen, if you have things that you know that you're good at, things that you love, then if you pursue them and you make them a part of your lifestyle, then your life obviously will be much more passionate, much more prosperous, and much more enjoyable. And if you're stuck in something that you're not necessarily passionate about, don't necessarily look at it as a trap But look at it as a means to get to where you want to go, to do the things that you do want to do and begin to make changes, as you'll see in other podcasts down the road, choices that move you in the direction to live your ideal 100-year lifestyle starting right now. And if you do that, you can have gratitude in the moment while also pursuing and enjoying and living your best life every single day for 100 years and beyond. So we want you to be healthy. We don't want you to decay and deteriorate. And every time you're faced with a choice, if you know that you have some things that need to change that are making you unhealthy and that you're not passionate about or that are affecting your prosperity, then in the moment you start to make choices to move you in the direction of living your ideal 100-year lifestyle. The next point, great relationships with multiple generations and multiple circles of people. What we learn from people that are living longer than ever is that you know when you're young you have lots and lots and lots of birthday parties weddings celebrations uh it's so cool lisa and i we've gotten to go to some weddings and some special events some life cycle events for some young people we do a lot of uh support and work with 
Life University, other institutions, other places around the country and around the world where we get invited periodically to some of these life cycle events. And it's so exciting to see because we are interacting with the younger generations to be able to be a part of those celebrations. And so what's interesting is as you get older and you get into your 60s, 70s, 80s, then you have more funerals than you do parties. Uh, I remember the movie The Intern with Robert De Niro where he, in that initial scene where he talks about, hey, I'm looking for something new. I want to re-engage in life and in the world and retirement's not what it was cracked up to be. And hey, I, the funerals are overwhelming, not as many celebrations. Well, that is true. And that's why multiple generations, interacting with multiple generations is so important. For many of us, the older generations in our life, they have not lived the 100-year lifestyle. They have lived the 40, 50, 60 year, 70 year, then rot away and deteriorate lifestyle. Many of them have rotted away, deteriorated, many of them on 5, 7, 10, 12, 20 medications, some of them. Uh, many of them, very sadly, got addicted to some type of medication. And so you realize that, you know, maybe we don't have those relationships and those relationships are not available to us in our current world. Well, we still need to honor and cherish those relationships and also seek out the wisdom of people that have been doing things longer than us. There's a lot of wisdom out there and people that have done things. I, I know for me being in practice, chiropractic practice, 34 years, helping people all over the world through seminars, uh, training doctors, working, giving seminars to fitness groups and organizations and companies changing and being involved with people and seeing so many people change in so many different circles. I've met people that have a lot of wisdom. Uh, I'm starting to realize our own wisdom here with what we're doing on a whole nother level. And so you have these people in your life. Maybe you do. Maybe we could be that group for you. Uh, we're honored that you're still listening here. So connect and stay connected to people with wisdom, multiple circles of people. You know, one thing that happens if you have a circle, for example, let's say it's a circle related to a company and you're all work and no play and something happens to the company or something happens to your job and you don't have any other circles in your life, that can be extremely depressing. But if you also have family circles, church or synagogue type circles, or hobby type circles, photography circles, or travel circles, or kids and family circles, whatever your other circles are. If you lose one circle, then your life doesn't fall apart where this is why people where you're all work and no play, or all one person and not having a balance of relationships, it can affect you negatively as you age. So we want you to be fulfilled. We want you to have multiple circles, multiple generations, so that you always have a balance of celebrations to be aligned with some of the inevitable challenges that come with tragedies that may happen in the world and in life, and also be able to share them with multiple circles of people. Next, lifelong learning activity and adventure. It is so exciting to see headlines of 95-year-old people graduating from college or 100-year-old people that are taking trips. I was inspired by video that I saw on YouTube of a World War II veteran was in Pearl Harbor, and he wanted to go. He had a vision. He had a long-term vision. At the age of 98, he decided, wow, I want to go to Pearl Harbor for the 75th anniversary of World Har Pearl Harbor. And the problem was he was had not taken care of himself. He was crippled, and he was really in severe pain, couldn't get out of a chair. But he made a decision, even at the age of 98, 99, to change his life. And he was able to travel four years later at the age of 103 to go to this event, this celebration, this honoring, really, more than a celebration of Pearl Harbor that just recently happened last year. And so here's a guy at 103 that was doing things that had a vision we talked about in previous podcasts. We talked about making long-term thinking cool. That's what this is as it relates to lifelong learning. You know, if you have things that you're passionate about and you commit to them and you commit to studying them and you embrace them and you become an expert at those things, they will feed you your entire lifetime. And what's cool is I, I remember this quote. I don't remember who said it. I wish I did because I do think it's important to always give credit for people that say things or write things. Uh, and I don't remember where I heard this, but I love the quote. 
and it says, if you love something enough, it will reveal all its secrets to you. That's why lifelong learning is so important because the more you commit to something and you commit to being good at it and you're committing to learning about it, the breakthroughs that happen in your understanding of learning and activity and adventure and being out in the world, it continues to grow exponentially because your brain, as we've talked about in other podcasts and we will be exploring even more, your brain will organize itself around your thoughts. And we're going to get into what it isn't, by the way, in a little bit. And you're going to see that, wow, so this can go the other way too. Yeah, this can go the other way too, but we don't want it to. We want you to live your ideal 100-year lifestyle 100% for 100 years. So it's about lifelong learning, activity, and adventure. Next, really important, keeping your spine and nervous system functioning without interference so you can adapt to your environment and function at your full potential. I have seen people in our practice and uh, chiropractors that I have spoken to, tens of thousands of them over the years, and other holistic doctors and other people out in the world of health and fitness where they have adopted this consciousness and the principles that we learned in chiropractic school way back that were written about in 1895 and put into a practice about the importance of the nervous system and the spine. Listen, a healthy spine is about being active. A healthy nervous system is about function. Uh, we have an acronym in this world that we'll spend a lot of time on. Uh, it's fitness over a lifetime. It's N squared of the fitness, N squared ESS. That's neurology, nutrition, endurance, strength, and structure. And neurology comes first. Why? Because you live your life through your nervous system. And your nervous system is the system that will support you in adapting to your environment. This is important, especially in today's day and age, because we see, for the first time in history, we see a generation of neurologically damaged children, kids that are receiving 72 shots that were never tested. There is no double-blind study for any vaccination out there, and yet we continue to give them and mandate them, and we are creating a generation of neurologically damaged children that is unlike anywhere else in the world and any other time in history. While at the same time, we are flooding the environment with toxins that are damaging the nervous system. And there's a great article on 100yearlifestyle.com on the epidemic of nerve disorders. You should read it if you haven't read it yet. Uh, it's also, there's some YouTubes on it. You should go check out our YouTube channel and subscribe to it. And it's important that you understand the importance of the nervous system. If you touch something and it's hot, you pull away instantaneously because your nervous system is sharp. If your nervous system was not sharp, you'd leave your hand there and it would fry and it would fry up, burn your skin and burn it down to the bone and maybe even further. But your nervous system is what helps you adapt. When you go for a run, why does your heart rate increase? Why does your breathing increase? You couldn't stop it if you wanted to. And the answer is it's because of your nervous system. Your cells say, hey, I need oxygen. And so they say, okay, send a message up to your brain, back to your heart, your lungs. And they say, okay, heart, beat faster. We need more oxygen in the cells. Come on, breathing. We need more oxygen in the cells. We need to flush out the waste products and get new energy in there. And so your nervous system controls all of that, and your spine is related to activity and function. So we see people that they get addicted to opioids because of spine pain. It's the number one reason people miss work uh, is because of backaches and spinal problems. And we don't even realize, most of us, the impact on our nervous system to control and coordinate the function of every cell, tissue, and organ of the body. And it's not linear all the time. I'm always amazed with our patients that we'll see somebody that comes in and maybe they had a, a neck pain and they get an adjustment or two or five where they get under lifestyle care and all of a sudden their allergies clear up or their gastritis clears up or things that you didn't even address that you didn't even know that they necessarily had because they didn't tell you about it, even though you asked all the questions, but they remember later and they say, hey, I forgot to tell you this, but that cleared up. Well, the answer is, is because the nervous system controls and coordinates everything. So if you want to live your best life every day, your ideal 100-year lifestyle, then it is vital to make the health of your spine and nervous system a priority so you can adapt to your environment. Next, financial freedom, abundance, and independence. 
Uh, yes, we want you to be abundant. The world needs you abundant. If you're listening to this, you're probably socially conscious. You care about the world. You enjoy the good things in life. You want to enjoy more of the good things in life. And one thing that is true is that nobody wants to get to 100 crippled, broke, or alone. So one of the challenges that we see in this generation that was blindsided by their extended life is that many of them are running out of money. I have an article here that was just sent to me by uh, Dr. David Melendez, one of our 100-year lifestyle affiliate chiropractors out in Cardiff by the Sea, just outside of San Diego, California. Amazing practice. You should go visit them if you're anywhere in the area. You refer your family and friends to them. And it says retirees risk running out of money a decade before death. Well, this is a problem. You know, the actuary tables, they were designed for a 80-year lifespan. People are living, or 75 or 80-year lifespan, and people are living longer than ever. They're changing the actuary tables to be aligned with the reality of people living longer than ever. And But that age of retiring at 65 was an arbitrary number, 72, arbitrary number. Listen, the reality of it is, is if you loved what you're doing and if you love what you're doing, why would you want to stop doing it? I have seen, just like you, maybe you know people, family, friends, parents, grandparents, they loved what they did and they were excited about retiring. And as soon as they ret uh, retired, they all of a sudden they started to lose their mind. Well, why did they start to lose their mind? Because if they don't have a place to go, if their life doesn't have meaning, if they're not useful and they don't feel useful, then they disappear and they check out mentally because they don't feel worthy or purposeful anymore. And so it's so important to understand that retirement is an outdated concept. Listen, if you loved what you did, then you would want to do it for a long time. And that can be in the area of a profession. Uh, I remember interviewing uh, Papa Jack Wall from, I can't think of the number, uh, the company right now uh, off the top of my head. It was the first company. It's out of Colorado. They make button-down Western shirts, and he was 107 years old when I interviewed him. His grandchildren are running the company right now, and he still goes to work every day. And I asked him on this interview, I, hey, Papa Jack, why do you still go to work every day? And here's a simple answer. You ready? Well, what, what else am I going to do? It is true that you, that you get tired of sitting around when you retire. And you say, but, you know, I have hobbies and I have this and I have that. Well, I think that's great. And you should have hobbies. You should pursue passions, not just through work and meaningful work, but community service, being involved in organizations that you're passionate about. That certainly counts. And if you stay engaged in meaningful work and you do it, while you're sharp and while you're passionate and you continue to do it and seek out those things that are related to your expertise, then you will probably never have to worry about money. And the other thing that is important, and I've been a keynote speaker at the National Association of Personal Financial Adv Advisors uh, several times. I spoke to their group and great sessions. And what's interesting is every single one of those personal financial advisors, they would say to me, you know what, Dr. Plasco, what you're saying about keeping yourself healthy and thinking long term, it is right on because people will very often, they will retire and they don't realize how long they're going to live. We try to tell them, but they say, oh, I don't want to, or they have a different perspective and they do. They And they start to get worried because they're really going to outlive their money. That's one thing. And then if they have a health crisis because they are not taking care of themselves after they retire, then they end up having to give all their money back to get their health back. And that is not the 100-year lifestyle. We want you to have financial freedom, abundance, and independence. The 100-year lifestyle way, it's about finding the balance, the perfect or ideal balance of exploration, playtime, and fun combined with meaningful work. So important to have that balance between work and play. People will often say, you hear them say, work hard and play hard. Well, we say prime time, prep time, and play time. Because if you have that balance, and you work that balance, and you set up your life in that way, and we're going to do complete sessions related to this, you will really be fulfilled on every level. You will find that balance. And if you ever get unhappy 
uh, for any reason. It's probably because maybe you're doing too much prime time, too much work without enough play time, so you get tired and fatigued, or may, or and it affects your relationships. Maybe you got too much play time and not enough prime time prep time, so you have you're having a lot of fun, but you can't really enjoy it because maybe you're overextending yourself financially, which can be a problem, or maybe you're abusing your body in a way that's causing all kinds of problems. So finding that balance, and then by the way, the other one is if you're doing too much prep with not enough play and prime, then you're probably the busiest person in the world that's not getting anything done. So finding that balance is super duper duper important, very important. Next, maximizing your innate capabilities and making the most of your time, energy, and talents. Listen, if every single one of us connected with our unique abilities and talents and began to deliver them into the world in a way that contributed to the areas that we were passionate about, and we did it for 100 years with decades of wisdom accumulating, this world would be completely, amazingly better, different, exciting, very fun place to be with no stress, no problems, or the problems that we would need to solve would really, truly be opportunities for all of us with those talents and abilities. So when you start to discover your innate capabilities and you start to make the most of your time, energy, and talents, hang on to your hat and watch how you attract so many more good things, positive things for you directly into your life. Very exciting. This is a big one as it relates to health. It's about keeping your original body parts functioning at full capacity and keeping your mind sharp. We live in a world, our healthcare system, it is not a healthcare system, it is a crisis care system. It is a crisis care system. Hospitals are built to help you get over diseases by removing organs and solving problems after the fact. Well, listen, the New England Centenarian study they found that the majority of people that were living to 100 with quality of life never got sick in the first place. There are second chances. So some of you, if you're listening to this and you got a second chance, hey, make the most of it by adopting these principles of living your ideal 100-year lifestyle. And the best way to live it, 80, 90, 100 years and beyond, is to never get sick in the first place. So keep your original parts Keep them functioning at full capacity and keep your mind sharp. This is a critical transition. You know, we see a lot of patients that come in, a lot of our profession, chiropractors, our affiliates all over the country and around the world, they will see people coming in who have been living from crisis to crisis to crisis. We talk to them about making that critical transition from crisis care to lifestyle care. Well, this is a critical transition. Because if you are used to living crisis to crisis and you never make that critical transition to lifestyle care, then you never get off the roller coaster. You are headed down a path of organ removal as time goes on because there's only so much that your body can handle if you're just living from crisis to crisis. But if you make that critical transition from crisis care to lifestyle care, you don't make a life of drugs and surgery your destiny. What you do is, is you start functioning, you keep that concept and principle of functioning at your highest level for a lifetime at the forefront of your value system. It becomes an anchor of your value system, which is so exciting to see. We see so many families change this consciousness and they turn their medicine chests into bathroom cabinets and they are on adventures and they're constantly well and they go from being a loud miracle of oh my back hurts and now I'm better to you know what we just don't get sick anymore wow we're healthy our digestion is normal stomach pain we don't have stomach pain anymore are you kidding me I don't need as much sleep as I used to because I'm just feeling energized all the time well that doesn't happen by accident it is a critical transition to go from crisis care to lifestyle care keeping all your parts maximizing your capabilities very important to make that transition again we're gonna explore this in a lot more detail in future episodes next accepting challenges embracing change and adapting to the unexpected there are so many things that happen that can happen in life that cause you to have to stop what you're doing and handle a challenge or a problem. I remember back in 1994, I think it was, when all of a sudden 
an old lady who was on many different medications. She was driving. She was driving a really big Cadillac. My chiropractic office was located in Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia, right on Peachtree Road. And this old lady lost control of her vehicle and stepped on the gas instead of the brake and drove through the front door of my office at 40 miles per hour, hitting some of the people that were in the reception room, hitting the assistant at the desk, driving almost through the wall into the adjusting area where we were seeing patients. So some patients got injured and it was very tragic. And listen, some of you have had much worse challenges. We have people that we know and love who have served in the military, really good friends. Uh, Shiloh Harris, who wrote an amazing book, Steel Will, I think, I believe is the name of it, amazing man, good friend. And my good friend, Dr. Todd Muncie, who's one of our 100-year lifestyle affiliate chiropractors in Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee, amazing guy, veteran, war hero, so significant, the challenges that these people have been through. Uh, we have gone through our own unique challenges, and you're going through your own unique challenges. I'm not making light of anybody's challenges. They are all real, and they are all important to all of us. When it comes to the 100-year lifestyle, what's important to understand is to accept them, not like this is the way it's always going to be, but to accept the reality, to acknowledge maybe a better word, to acknowledge the reality so that you can then take it on and embrace the changes so that you can adapt to the unexpected in a positive way. That's so important. If there are so many people where they'll stick their head in the sand, they'll sweep it under the rug. I know that there have been times where I have done that with certain pieces and elements of my world and my life, and maybe you have done the same thing. Well, it's time to stop being an ostrich. Take your head out of the sand and embrace the change and the adapt to the unexpected things that have happened to you over the course of your life so that you can turn them around and make the most of your life right now where you are and start living that ideal 100-year lifestyle to create that long-term vision for yourself to get you through. Next, balancing the need for immediate gratification and a secure future. It's very important to find this balance. So many people, individuals, families, companies, practices, organizations, they are just living from moment to moment to moment to get immediate gratification for all involved, never taking the steps forward that will be necessary to secure an amazing future. So for a while, everybody feels good because of the immediate gratification, but it doesn't last because there's no long-term vision in place. And so when you have that long-term vision, you can secure your future without the stress that many people have because they're not feeling satisfied in the moment. You want to feel satisfied in the moment. If you really want to feel satisfied in the moment, you will love the fact that what you are doing today is not just good for you today, but it is making your tomorrow even better than today. That is so exciting. And if you don't do it that way, we hear a lot of times, and there's some great articles on this, by the way, on 100yearlifestyle.com. There's an article called, If You Only Had 24 Hours to Live. Well, people that live that way, that may be fine for a week. That may be fine for two weeks. If you're still here in a year, then you're probably crippled, broken alone because you have not found the balance between immediate gratification and a secure future. When it comes to parenting, and we'll talk a lot about parenting, because kids today very often are just quick fix oriented. They don't understand and they don't value long-term thinking. And if you let kids know that, hey, you know what? Remember the other day you were so stressed out? Hey, you survived that. And aren't you glad that we did this instead of that? And you could start to frame long-term thinking to kids while they're young. You know, we used to, we talked about the perfect balance of playtime. We used to take the kids, we still do this, take the kids away from the world. We would go on extended vacations, no technology. You can do it as a staycation. You could do it if you get away, go camping, go into nature, uh, get on a plane, go for a drive, find a place where you block out the world and just spend time together. Such a beautiful thing. Because if you do that, uh, you will create this 
rock foundation of trust within your kids, your family, that will last a lifetime and it will be enduring. And it'll be good for your relationship as well. And then lastly, from the standpoint of what it is, and then we're going to talk about what it is not. It's about trusting your innate intelligence because the 100-year lifestyle is yours to customize. And when I say trust your innate intelligence, we do have an innate intelligence. It's running our bodies. We don't have to think about our heartbeat. We don't have to think about our respiration. We don't have to think about our fingers and our toes. Every We don't have to think about breathing. It's taking care of us through our innate intelligence that is run by our nervous system. And if you trust your innate intelligence, that's also recording everything around you in your world so that your body can adapt and you use what your own genetic capabilities are and you apply the things that you learn all the way and what your innate intelligence is learning by adapting you to your environment, you can customize your 100-year lifestyle to be how you want it to be. And then as you come up against challenges and issues and things in life or in your world, you will be confident within yourself that you will get through it because of this self-trust you have because of this innate intelligence within you. Now, we've just covered what it is, and we're going to get into, in future podcasts, so many more things that are related to details of this. I also want to have a conversation with you about what it is not. Because for some of you, what it is not is really important because you're on a bad path and you need to make some changes. Here's what it is not. It is not rotting away as a human preservative in a nursing home. That is not the ideal 100-year lifestyle. We have a very skewed view of aging because this accidental centenarian generation has outlived their scientifically predicted life expectancy they didn't know they were going to live this long, so they didn't plan for it. They did not have a vision or a grandmaster plan. They felt like they were living on borrowed time when the reality is it was birthright time. And if you're a sandwich mom or a sandwich dad where you're taking care of your kids and your parents both at the same time, you're sandwiched in between, you know what we're talking about. And we want you to realize that Aging that way is not inevitable, that you have choices and you need to make those choices differently right now. It is not abusing your body, masking symptoms with drugs, and then continuing to abuse yourself until one organ after the other has to be removed or replaced. Listen, this was the motto. This was the strategy, the thought process of the allopathic system that this generation, this nursing home generation, has lived by. The reality of it is, is that the more you mask symptoms with drugs, the more that you cover things up, the more that you abuse yourself because you can't feel things, the more your body is not able to adapt and it is ultimately the destiny of that thought process to where one organ after the other will have to be removed or replaced. And while I'm very thankful and grateful that we have that technology. I hope I never need it, and I hope you or the people that I love never need that technology. You know, it's interesting. The motto of the nursing home generation for many of them was, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they define broke as serious life-threatening disease or severe excruciating pain. Well, in the world of the 100-year lifestyle, we need to redefine broke. When you're out of balance, you're broke. So stop abusing your body. We're going to talk down the road as we get into all the different very important elements of this consciousness. We're going to look at dominant energy patterns, and we're going to look at destructive patterns as compared to human potential patterns and how you can make those changes so that if you do have addictions or these abuse patterns are taking over your world, that you can make changes that are good for you for the long haul. Next. All work and no play, that is not the 100-year lifestyle. Being out of balance in that way, that is not the 100-year lifestyle that leads to all kinds of challenges in relationships, isolation, all kinds of issues that you don't need to deal with if you have the balance like we talk about in the world of the 100-year lifestyle. Next, financial survival for 35 years and then barely getting by on Social Security and Medicare. Listen, we want you to be abundant at every stage of the game. And we want you to be able to utilize your talents and skills 
throughout your entire lifetime, engaging in lifelong learning so that you're not just living in survival. The thing about survival, it's a pattern. So if your pattern is surviving, getting through the day, I survived, getting through the week, I survived, it's not because of the way the world is, it's because of the way that you are and you're thinking. And we want you to make some changes so that you are living in abundance. And Social Security and Medicare, if it's still here, that there'll be bonus checks that you get every month because of the quality of life that you've created living this way. Insignificant retirement where you become a meaningless number in a long line in an outdated system, that is not the 100-year lifestyle way. Uh, wearing out your body in the first 50 years and then suffering the consequences during the second 50, that is not the 100-year lifestyle way. We want you to function at a very high level for a lifetime. Uh, I remember just a year ago, I had to redo my life insurance policy. And the doctor that came to do my testing is the same doctor that I had 30 years ago when I originally had this policy put in place. When he was going through my testing. He tested my blood. He tested my blood pressure. He tested my pulse. He asked me about how many times I've been in the hospital and how many organs I've had removed. And, you know, I've been living this lifestyle for since I'm 15 years old with some detours along the way, like college, which is very exciting that I survived that. It was interesting because he said to me something that I cannot let go of because he said to me something like this, Dr. Plasker, do you know how many people that are your age mid-50s to late-50s who are not on any medication, have not been to any doctors for any emergencies, have not had any surgeries, have not been on psychotropic drugs or antidepressants. And he went down this whole list that also have your blood pressure 108 over 68 and your pulse 56. Do you know how many I see that are like that? And I said, I don't know what, like 50%? He said zero. And this is a doctor a medical doctor, a physician that was 30 pounds overweight and he was not healthy. And he said, zero, they're all on drugs. They're all on medication. They're all having side effects. What was interesting about that conversation is I could see the regret because he, and then he looked at me and he said some version of this, it's not an exact quote, but it's pretty close. He said, you know, when I first met you 30 years ago, I thought you were a freaking lunatic. And he didn't say freaking. He said, I thought you were a freaking lunatic. We were preaching this message way back when, but it just wasn't cool, and it really was the minority view, and we had not had 30 years yet of the allopathic destruction that we're seeing in the world today, and it was affecting him, and I asked him, well, why don't you make the changes for yourself? Why don't you stop prescribing all these drugs and tell people to live this way instead? He said, because then we wouldn't have any patients, and I was like, wow, that is profound. And so, listen, we don't want you to wear out your body. We want you to have a healthy body all along the way and make the changes necessary so that your second 50 years, while certainly you may have to adapt how you do things, maybe you can't run as fast or maybe uh, you have to uh, change your shoes or maybe you need to get adjusted a little bit more frequently. Your lifestyle care may increase a little bit if you've had some injuries along the way, whatever it is. But you make those changes, you make those adaptations and start to live your life differently. It is amazing the difference that it makes in your life. Make sure that you keep that long-term vision in your mind and the way that you take care of your body. Uh, it's interesting. I have not been to a medical doctor in 30 years. I have three, two or three different chiropractors that I see that have different styles. A massage therapist periodically that I'll see, they have different styles to keep my body functioning right. There are sometimes I need and I want a real firm adjustment. Sometimes I want a very gentle style of adjustment. Some chiropractors that I see will do both styles. You find the style that's right for you and keep everything functioning at its highest level for a lifetime. Same with your nutrition. There are times that you'll have to change the way you're eating based on things in the environment, how you feel, uh, how much stress you're under. So pay attention so that you don't wear out your body in the first 50 years, but you keep your body healthy throughout your entire lifetime. Next, accumulating wealth in the first 50 years and destroying relationships along the way, leaving you nobody to share it with. Uh, we, that's tragic. We have seen people, we have talked to people where it was all about the money and then all of a sudden they had nobody to share it with and they were alone. Well, that is uh, sitting in a beautiful building or a beautiful home with nobody to share it with 
is a very, very, very sad thing for many, just the thought of that. So make sure that you value and nurture your relationships. Uh, creating wealth at the price of your health. We've already talked about that. You don't want to do that. Denying yourself the good things in life. You know what? That's not what the 100-year lifestyle is about. In fact, we want you to enjoy the good things of life, and we also know that it is very important to learn to love the things that are good for you and not feel like these things that you may be denying yourself because you used to like them and maybe you had great childhood memories, but then you realize that they're cancer causing and they're making you sick. You realize those were not really treats, that those were tricks disguised as treats. And so at some point we all grow up, we become aware, we become conscious and we start to make different choices. So learn to love the things that are good for you. We believe that everyone deserves to be healthy and express their full potential from the time they are born through their last breath of life. This includes you. This includes your family, your loved ones, and everybody in your life. It's so exciting to be on this journey with you as we are building out this consciousness, transforming health and longevity consciousness worldwide so you and your loved ones can live at 100% for 100 years and beyond. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us on this episode. We love and appreciate you so much. Thanks for sharing this information and subscribing to our resources because we are together. We are making an impact that is changing people's lives and making a difference in the world. Thank you so much for joining us on the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have topics that you want us to cover, people you want us to interview, maybe you have some stories that you want to share, stories of yourself, loved ones, people in your life, we would love to hear from you and share your story. Please email us at my100 at 100yearlifestyle.com. And remember, nobody wants to get to 100 or even 50, 60, or 70 for that matter, crippled, broke, and alone. So please share the 100 Year Lifestyle, all of our podcasts, social media pages, website, with your family, friends, and coworkers so they can take this journey with you. And until next time, adjust your lifestyle, live your best life today and every day on the road to a sensational century.